No. Uh, there we go. Ah. CT. He's that much of an impact. Like, it makes that impact. Like, the beautiful 32 degree weather means nothing if he's, he's in the studio. <laughs> no, my man. We don't, you know? <laughs> good, good, good. So, Lily's um, from China. Um, um, so. um, 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's so crazy. So, Cape Town has been representing, representing Cape Town. And very okay, much so. Started, Manda. Uh, Let's go ahead, has been a lot of, lot of stories to actually tell. So, we need to give him his 30, 40 minutes instead of us talking wow. and taking up his time. Hi, Tam- Hi Tambi. How are you doing there from Zambia? We just get started, guys. My name is Dan. Uh, Dan Costa. I'm a person who uh, obviously looks forward to the show, very excited about the show, very excited about uh, um, leadership and business um, coaching. Um, I'm a business and executive coach um, who really looks at how do I really close the gap between performance uh, and potential. So if you think as an executive, there's a gap between performance and potential, please slide in my DM. Let's have a conversation. Hi, everyone. My name is Manda, and I am a consultant at Deloitte uh, Consulting. Uh, you know, uh, if, if you want to um, optimize and transform your operations environment, I am your guy. If I'm not your guy, I've got tons and tons of people who can work with you in there. But in this, in this setting, um, I, I, I get to enjoy one of my passions, which is growing people which is helping uh, you know, people succeed by using unconventional ways. And today we certainly have a very, very unconventional guest uh, with a very exciting story. And, and I mean, Dan, remember when we were doing the prep, he was like literally just wanting to give it all. And we we're like, listen, man, we, we, you need to tone it down. I, I don't think they're ready, you know? I don't think they're ready. I think maybe, maybe let's save it for part two somewhere in the future. Yeah, no, it was very exciting. I think always having a story which does not follow the norms is always very exciting. And you get to learn a lot and understand that you do not need to comply or follow, for flow with the water, it flow with the river. You can go on the sideways and do your own thing and still uh, be successful. And I think the story today is actually going to be a testimony to that. No, definitely. Good. Okay, so guys, this is the webinar. So we want you to, to keep chatting. Tell us what you're getting from the insights or what your story is with regards to the topic, participate, put your questions in the Q and A. Uh, please also, um, if you have anything you would want to raise or you want us to discuss, bring it in the Q and A. We'll be very excited to actually respond to it. Uh, we are live on YouTube. So we ask you guys, please subscribe so that every time we put the videos, uh, this video goes on live there, and if there's a Q and A which has not been completed, we we put it on the YouTube channel so you can actually watch it later. Um, and also, we have a Facebook um, page um, called Ordinary Extraordinary. Please look out for the information and for the uh, for all the updates we actually put uh, on the web now. Uh, yes, and um, guys, part of part of having this session here is to also network. Um, so, uh, please in the chat box, if you want to tell us what you do, you know, you've got some services, you've got some businesses and you provide some services, please go ahead and put in the chat. I would like to maybe just make a shout out to, uh, Mandisa Butelezi. Mandisa, are you there? Are you there? Cause Mandisa, I mean, look, uh, look. I mean, Dan, I've known Tando now for, for almost, uh, you know, 20 years. And, you know, Tando can be a lot of things, but a model is not one, you know. Um, and Mandisa, if, if, if Toa, you can put up that, that poster on the, on the screen, right? Uh, just, just, just maybe, maybe some people will, will even say that the photo and the person, might, there might be some discrepancies, but uh, we don't want to go in that one. But Mandisa is a, per, is, is a lady who does, all our posters, she really makes uh, people really, really look good. And this is one of the services that she, she does and she's providing it uh, to us um, for free, joining the movement and contributing to creating this ecosystem that helps people grow and, um, and, 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 and achieve their potential. So shout out to you, Mandisa. 
Uh, then the other thing to mention is we, we're not doing this for any commercial gain, but I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Biotech Bi -Tech Africa uh, for providing the uh, Zoom licenses for us to be able to have this webinar. Uh, they do cool stuff. Uh, check their website. Uh, check them on LinkedIn. Uh, slide into Dan's DM on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, uh, he's got a lot to share. All right. So without any further ado, I think let's go, let's go in into the introduction of this guest, right? I mean, uh, like I said, I've known this gentleman now for close to 20 years, you know? Uh, I should say that the first time I met him, he had a very interesting hairstyle. I think uh, that is when uh, peroxide you have was. A picture. Uh, Usually, have pictures, man. Do you have a picture? Uh, I think, I think, I think I might just pull it out there. I, I think I might <laughs> just, I might just pull it out there, right? Uh, it's, it's here somewhere, you know. Before the end, I'm sure I might, I might just pull it out. But Dan, all I have to say is that peroxide was yeah. cheap, you know. Oh, um, okay, I get, so... it, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, You know, it, no, it definitely. Yeah. It, it does. It does. And he managed to convince one of our other friends as well that uh, that's the future. And, you know, uh, that's one thing about him. He's able to convince. Right. Um, actually, a story that I'd like to tell about him is 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 uh, we I remember there was once a strike. Right. Um, with the catering company. So, I mean, they like put tools down. And then uh, the university decided that they are going to give us, I can't remember how much the allowance is per day. Quickly, I mean, he called me across uh, the corridor into his room. We discussed, he said, look, I think that there's an opportunity for us to sell Buravos rolls now. Yeah. And the target market is all the races on the university. Dan, I don't think we've cooked so much Buravos ever, you know. Uh, 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 in life, he had he had an electric frying pan in his room, oh, uh, okay. which which we used to make some uh, chicken livers there. But man, we were going to all these catering races, cooking buravors in their in their ovens. It was buravors everywhere, you know. And I think that it was about eight of us, and we managed to have a bit of a profit as well, you know. Um, so, 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 so that is a story that really reminds me of how pioneering he is, how entrepreneurial he is. Um, and there are many more that I can share, but for today, I think that one is the one that really stands out, um, you know, for the, for the, for the discussions today. So I think without any further ado, Mr. Tando Gobe, welcome to Ordinary Extraordinary Webinar. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Dan and everyone. I'm doing very well and goes. No man, fantastic. Uh, I know that you 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 do say in your profile, in your Twitter profile, that you are you are a struggling artist uh, from Buffalo who 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 checks uh, financial markets, uh, you know, uh, from time to time. Uh, and here we 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 bring you in as uh, MD of Personal Trust. Uh, you also are the chairman of Ubumbo. And you're also the chairman of Reimagine SA. Uh, Tando, where did it all start? Because uh, if I do remember, you know, you were not the best at, at attending classes, but you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> somehow you passed. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, okay. Um, yeah, no, Amanda, it's a very good question. <laughs> Firstly, I must say, and I didn't realize that I was being invited to a roast. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hot in Cape Town, but I'm sweating. Hey, I'm feeling the heat here. <clears throat> but uh, thank you once more. <laughs> thank you once more for inviting me. Um, I think, as I said on Wednesday, when we connected on Tuesday, mm. I think you guys are very brave. Um, as Manda said, I'm probably a risky person to, to have here. Um, <clears throat> because I, I, I don't do your Vusi Tembequayo type of talks and things. I think, I, think, oh. I think one needs to be real to be able to, be, to, to, to have real conversations. And so it's very difficult to have real conversations in these platforms because um, it's not what people want to hear. 
you know that's that's why hollywood is where it is and uh and and you guys are where you are <laughs> but we um, it's not mainstream but I, ours is for real <laughs> So I, appreciate it and I think I think technology allows us to have these real conversations. So I'm, mm. I'm pretty excited. Um, and I know that there's some people here in Cape Town. Thanks, guys, for, 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 for tuning in. Um, Wana Gail is also here. He's saying he's coming from a cold East London. Ah. And I know people in Cape Town, you know, would much rather of the beach. I was saying Manda, telling Manda earlier that my, my kids went swimming earlier. I wouldn't have a pool, by the way. We used to have one, but Kunzima. Um, but most of them are pretty much looking for John of Gate. That's that's where Cape Town is now. <laughs> so um, to be here, I think is very exciting. <clears throat> um, I think, I think, I think also one thing I must say. I, I mean, I, as, as I've, I've, I've watched a few, in fact, quite a few of your of your shows and, and interviews. So I also understand that it's just one perspective and it's not gospel. So I really look forward to the engagements later on as well. Um, mm. It's really just my own views and no one else's. And because I also represent some organizations, some of which are here, um, I, I just want to say these are my views, not theirs. So they mustn't uh, people think. The last thing I want to say is that social media uh, policy. <laughs> <laughs> Before I get into answering Manda's question, I do want to say that uh, I really do believe that um, uh, we, we we romanticize career and corporate. Um, and mm. so, again, if you're not here for uh, uh, peeling off of that then 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 i think you're in the wrong in the wrong conversation um we are here at senegal so we're also going to keep it cordial um <laughs> before we get into why i didn't attend much lectures because i, I realized there's this thing called time management early in life oh. uh, <laughs> i like that <laughs> and some lecturers just tell you their opinion they don't teach the textbook or what's important but Again, it's it's not a family show, it's an adult show. You want to say this in front of students. Um, do you want to say that, you know, where, where did it all start? I think no one exists in a vacuum. Um, so the reality is that I was born uh, in Fort Beaufort. But more importantly and more significantly, um, Beaufort Log is a very, 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 very important place. If you guys haven't been, be there. Amanda's been there. That's why he's such a great guy. Dan, you might do that before you, before you, before you, before you die. <laughs> um, but also, um, uh, on the one hand, we had Obions or Tour, Yom Feka, and the other one, Oples, Ongapai, Osneman, and I grew literally as brought up by, by, by these families and I'm a product of them. And so I've got the advantage, I think, that I'm drawing, I, I draw from a lot of sources. And so I really, from early on, knew that there wasn't one way or one story or a perfect story like Hollywood would have us believe. So um, for me, there was nothing that was going to be paved, uh, and I still don't believe that. And so that for me was, was quite, quite important. Um, and I think even before one starts school, you know, you have interests. But as you grow up, especially if you grow up um, without, you know, a silver spoon, you realize that your interests actually take second, second place. Mm -hmm. There are fundamental things that need to happen in life. You need to eat, you need to breathe. Um, and, and, and you need to clothe yourself and you need to make sure that things are functioning properly before you can, you know, um, go in and, and, and face, uh, you know, trying to be baby face or someone like that. Um, <clears throat> and so, again, if, you know, that from, as a fundamental is quite important because once you get into a career or anything in life, there will be difficulties. If you're not clear about what your belief system is, um, it becomes very, very difficult. Mm. Um, and the other point, I guess, is that a career or corporate in particular is li literally a very small part of life. Uh, it's a very significant part of life for most of us who end up there because it, it is, enables a lot of things, enables you to, if you do it properly, to look after family. A job is very, very important. Um, some, someone even said last week, a job is more important than even your family uh, because without a job, you can't have a family. I disagree. But I think a job is literally right up there. So it's something to be respected. It's something to, to be studied. It's something to be devoted to. Um, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to have something that's meaningful. So just as cornerstones, before we get into the story, I think those, those beliefs are very important. Uh, and again, we can go into deep into them if people are, are, are interested. And I call them beliefs because it's not a truth, but I think it's something that, that at least paves the way for, for some of the stuff that we are about to share. <clears throat> um, and then the last point, I guess, is that uh, following from what my previous one is that when one um, has options, 
um, to be a baby face, then you must be grateful. But it's, it means it's, it's a privilege, it's something you must work towards and not something that you must take for granted. And mm -hmm. again, saying people the options are, are not good, but the point is you must be able to tell the wood from the trees. Um, where did it go? And I think more importantly, asking me what the different pivots or the important stages of my life. So like most of us here, I went to school. Um, and the very first decision or pivot I can think of when I look back at what really shaped my life to what it is today was to decide, you know, where to go in, in, in high school in the residence. And, and this is certainly one of the things that I think, you know, when I think, when I look back at, at life, uh, it's something that I still can't reconcile. But, but literally, it, it shaped the rest of my high school career um, in a way that perhaps if you, you know, if you didn't go to boarding school, you won't really understand because it meant that I was part of a different block. I, uh, so, so when it comes to things like uh, selecting teams, selecting classes, um, I literally had an advantage simply because of the choice that, that, that I'd made. Um, and, and for me, that's, that's quite interesting how that, how that happened. Um, the very second one is a decision was literally taking up basketball. Um, and I guess one decides to take up any sports if you like, but I, was in, I, I went to a school that was dominated and still is by rugby. Uh, and so we had this new guy called Skip and he introduced from the US and he introduced basketball to school. And I, two years guys played. And in the third year, this one guy came along and says, listen, just come play the sport. And um, <clears throat> the reason it's significant to me is because I knew nothing about basketball. I didn't, I didn't even know what the rules were. But the guy said, no, listen, I think you'll be okay. I was much better at athletics. I was in the A-team um, athletics team. Uh, but I took something that was uncomfortable. Um, and literally I had to go back with a basketball and shoot like, the skip, I think, gave me a target, 20 a day, um, 20 in the morning, you know, 200, 200 a day, I had to do 50 in the morning, just, and, and you had to put up a hoop, I had to go uh, sort of negotiate that. <clears throat> but that taught me something, and I think even to this day, um, doing something uncomfortable is, doesn't faze me because, um, not because of that, but I think for me, that was, a, that was a confirmation to say, hang on, you can actually, and it took me three months, I was in the first team, um, uh, I didn't miss because, the school, they have these things called all rounders tie, and um, you can get it a maximum of four times. Um, not a maximum of four times, but the third time, you know, if, if I didn't make the first team, I would I would have missed it. Um, and, and that's a school record, by the way, Manda. So if you want to go look, ah, uh, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Most people get it twice or, or three times. But the point is, it was, it was a huge risk. Um, and and whilst it doesn't really matter in my greater scheme of, of life, for me, it's quite a significant point because if you talk about pivots, it's not something that it's, it's literally um, um, a crossroad that, that you're talking about. Um, <clears throat> and then I think came time to decide what to do, what to study. Um, and and, and uh, I had observed uh, my father. Um, so when I was born, Itama, Itama is slang for my father, for those who don't know. So Itama had been... Um, you know, I think he started off as just someone, uh, not even admin worker. I think he might have been a security guard or something at the University of Forte, uh, or rather making sure that he was a clerk. He was making sure that the buses are safe. I think that's how he, he explained it to me. Um, but because he was, he was um, uh, what do you call it? He was a member of the university. He was able to study. So he studied at night and ended up in HR, but his lifelong dream was to be a lawyer. So you know, he quit his job, I think, somewhere in the middle of his life, and then went back to varsity full time for the first time in his mm. life. And we were still, so, you know, of course, he had a support structure. And, but, you know, so he really wanted to be this lawyer. So I, I grew up thinking this thing is quite important because even when he did it, before he did it, he would talk about it to me. And so when I got to start at nine at the time, grade 11, um, I had a conversation with him because he came to me and he said, Listen, what are you, you, you going to study? That's not an option. You're going to go to varsity. And he said to me, You're not going to go to Forte. <laughs> so, um, <okay. laughs> uh, so I said to him, listen, I'm, I'm thinking of this thing being a lawyer. And he said to me, he looked at me and sort of said, okay. Then we came back about 10 minutes later and he said, uh, and his words were, in other words, I don't want you to be hungry. So uh, choose something that uh, is more lucrative than, <laughs> than law, uh, which, which I found very interesting. So, but basically it was his way of saying, listen, just do whatever you want to do. Um, and so that was a very, very big decision. Um, ended up calling a few guys. One of the guys was Lona Makubela, who was very clear, come to UCT, study business science, 
choose Gopano for a residence. So okay, okay, this is this is decided. Uh, so that's that's literally what I did. Um, <clears throat> my marks weren't that great instead of nine, and so I called Lunabo again. Bra, what's going on? Uh, these people are telling me to wait until Madrid. I'm like, no, no, don't wait. Full entrance exam, which most people don't know about. Went and did it. Um, within two weeks, <clears throat> got a response saying, welcome, these are the choices. And I think the second option was business science. Can't remember what the first one was. There were three options that I had put down. I got, got into all of them. But the business science one was sort of a five-year option. So I said, listen, um, these are the options. There's no take business science. Um, I'm doing BCom. I'm, 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 I, think I, should, I think I should have done business science. Anyway, so that was literally a, a, a big, a big thing. Um, and then obviously um, there are other factors as well. Um, but at the time, I must say, I was not really interested in, in sort of um, building a career. I knew from early on in life that I wanted to be in business. I mean, I remember in standard two, um, I was 10, um, standard three actually, I was 10, 10, 11, and I got to the school, new school called um, Davidson and, and, and Alice, and I couldn't believe they didn't have a tuck shop. So a week later, I went home, asked for some money, didn't say what it was for, went and bought some chocolates, I went to the local pep and bought um, double decker chocolates and I sold chocolates for about a week until the teachers called me in. Oh, wow. Dan and a few guys were my, <laughs> were my clients so, then. I told them, I so, Tando, so, so Tando, the, the, the hot dogs were just uh, a level up. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you tell the story wrong. I think we made a lot of money. We actually, we actually even calculated how many KKS meals are being served at Copan, which was 500 per meal. <clears throat> and then there were three meals and the strike was going to last for seven days. So we knew how we knew the market. And, um, and I think we had enough money to go buy ice cream. We actually literally used to go on Tuesdays, I think it was Monday, to, to, to steer. Marcel's. And, and Marcel's, yeah. But usually those steer, so we could upgrade to Marcel's and, and, and UTTs. <laughs> but coming back to what, what, I was, what I was saying, so I wasn't really serious about it, and about the study part. I knew I, knew I wanted to be a student UCT, but the other things I was interested in, and this is the interest part, so I really was interested in rugby and not really to think, I didn't think I was going to play South Africa. I mean, even at Dale, I was never first choice or whatever, but I really wanted to pursue this thing um, and just play. Um, <clears throat> uh, the second thing on my list was actually music. And, and when as people say, say I wanted, I'm a struggling artist, not, it's not a joke, actually. I think I'm a struggling artist. At some point, I will, I will release an album. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford it yet. Um, <clears throat> so so I, well, at, least, at least I couldn't at that point in time. So I really went to UCT, but I got along and I got in, because it was the, the, the GenSec program at the bursary as well. So I was really Lexi Daisy. And then li literally um, three months into my varsity, uh, we lost our father. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I had to make, I, I knew that it was, it was time to be quite serious. And so the very first decision I had to make was, listen, this four year thing must, must go. I need to finish this thing in, 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 in it's five year thing it must finish in four years. Consulted um, everyone, it can't be done. <clears throat> but I looked at the rule book, actually you could take on summer school. So I had a plan, I had to get summer school to fund this thing. Went to my father's old boss, um, Mr. Fancel, I remember his name. Oh no, there's a bursary fund somewhere. Got, so that funded the, the sort of, um, but, it, but it can't fund full years, but it funded uh, sort of summer schools. Um, and literally we had to sort of come up with a plan on how we're gonna do this. Um, and I also knew at the time that um, the schedule was gonna be quite packed. So I had to, I had to be quite selective, um, you know, which, which lectures I was gonna to go to. So mine does right. I mean, I think I did auditing three, I might've gone to two lectures the whole year. But I knew auditing is something that you can study on your own. Uh, but tax on the other hand is something that's quite intricate and you have to work through examples. So I had to speak to people ahead of me um, and, and literally had, you know, that, that, that had to be done. And I think eventually it was. Um, <clears throat> the other thing on the list, I needed to get pocket money. So um, I needed to have a source of income. So um, spoke to, um, and this is really where the power of the network came to me. I spoke to people like Manda, um, how do we do this? No, become a receptionist. So I was a receptionist and then got into housecom and then I was a subordinate. Um, <clears throat> a small friend of mine said, listen, we can do tax on the side. So the whole lot of things that we did. So um, for me, that was, that was quite a big, a big, a big step, a big stage. Um, and through that, um, I had to obviously get a bursary as well for second year. So I got into Deloitte um, and I was doing a double major. So 
for me, it was about, and I'm dwelling on this because, but I think it's quite important when you get to the career part and our times on our side. Uh, but, you know, at Deloitte, my big thing was now going to be business. And, I, and at the time, it was universally accepted uh, to get ahead in business, you had to be a chartered accountant. So that's what I did. And I signed up, um, got there, and the first VAC, VAC work, because I needed the cash, so I did, I've signed up for all the VAC works. Um, <clears throat> first VAC work, it was quite nice. You got into these big groups and you hugged and they did the so amplitude test and whatever. And I thought, oh, that, I can be the CA thing. And then the next one, they put me into this client of theirs and I just had to count boxes the whole week. And one thing I knew about myself is that I would much rather um, <clears throat> create and be forward looking and I'm not gonna go and audit someone else's work. So um, within a month, I called the lady who was running it, running the thing. And I said, listen, I, I think we, we're going in the wrong direction. We're not at the right match. Um, she called me for three weeks trying to convince me. Um, listen, you're the, one of the top students and the aptitude test it didn't work. Uh, and then came the threat, right? So then they sent me a lawyer's letter to say, this is how much you must pay back. And, and this is a big thing when you're talking about corporate because a lot of us start with this big debt. And the amount that they paid that they paid for, let's say it was 10,000 Rand. I had to, I'd owed them at, I know, because it would take about four years after. Um, I would have to pay them, you know, um, 30,000 30, Rand, which is three times the price. Um, but still I knew it was the right thing for me. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know where I was going to go. So I ended up calling Ramona. Um, who spoke to Sandam, but they couldn't so help. If we just paused, right? That's a very interesting. So you have a dynamic, you've got a corporate, um, big corporate, Manda prides himself in this corporate, by the way. Um, and, and they give you work, you don't like it. Then you decide this is not for me, you're out. And then they come and slap you with this bill, which you say three times what it should be. I think there's, a, there's an interesting, to me, dynamic question I would want to put in there, which is, but what made you think it's the right thing? Because I'm assuming people around you are like, dude, this is crazy. Why are you doing this? Why would you leave Deloitte? And why would you go and get a bigger bill just because you don't like the way? Why did you felt like this is not the right thing? Yeah, so, so for me, it comes back to the, to the, to the beliefs, right? So... Um, literally, if, if we go back to what we started and, and just chatted about, for me, I, I'd always thought that the end goal um, must be something that makes sense, you know. So, um, really, for me, that that and 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 um, even talking about um, or thinking about because I had to think about it, and you're right. I mean, I didn't sign there and then. It took me about four to five months because they said, "No, go and think about it," um, and I didn't take it personally. Um, but I, but I had been brought up across a number of families, you know, um, <clears throat> and I had seen different people getting success in different ways. So, for example, um, okay. I've heard the story of my father, and he went the traditional way. Guanzo um, Toi, uh, we had Uncle Mike, who had um, a very, very different success. I mean, in fact, he ended up being a politician. Um, and 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 God bless, it was a different thing. And Guam Faika, we had... Um, Know, our uncles were still there and, and, and grandfather who ended up being um, uh, an owner of, 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 of a soccer soccer club and literally started off as, as someone was running taxis. So for me, I, I, I knew early on that there's definitely a disjoint between success and what it is perceived, but the reality is one needs the skill. So for me, going into accounting, as I said, was, was a route to business. It was not, I, I never grew up thinking I want to have this title. So for me, I didn't want to be tied to CASA. I wanted the set of skills. Um, but in order to get these set of skills, if I'm going to be tucked away in this think box for five, for four years, for me, it's not the, the trade-off is just doesn't make sense. And so okay. um, mm -hmm. the, you can get skill. And, for, and, and and obviously the the money money point is 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 moot because I knew I couldn't afford it. <laughs> so <clears throat> the reality is. If they're willing to pay for my second year, um, there are probably two or three other corporates out there who are willing to take on the debt. And that's what happened, actually. So yeah. they're not asking me to pay immediately. There was no immediate cost. There's no cash flow. And, and I don't think Deloitte were alone in this. I think I don't know if it still happens. But when corporates, and it happens in sport as well, you sign up a young guy or, and, and it doesn't work out, you know, there, there are legal repercussions. And, and the ladies were very nice about it. So when I say it was a threat, it, it was a threat in the sense that it, it brought about insecurity on top of insecurity, but mm. uh, 
I was very clear and I thought it through and I was like, no, chaps. Um, and I was doing a double major. So I knew finance was more interesting. I was going to classes. I didn't miss a finance lecture. Uh, I was very interested in capital asset pricing model. Uh, and I was interested in their definition of risk. So you walk away, you captivate it as to know, man, this thing doesn't make sense, but this is the best they have for a risk model. Then you get into an auditing class and you sleep. <laughs> so that, was, that actually just um, um, oh. I, I wanted from me. Okay. Um, so, 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 so Tando. Yeah, so 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 I think let's fast forward. I think look, this this story is 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 quite detailed, right? So yeah. you 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 get through university. I think maybe let's touch on your departure out of university into the yeah. work environment, right? Yeah. Um <clears throat> like how did you now get into personal trust? Um you're gonna force me back into the detail, but um I was part of UC Rugby Club. Um, and because I had this problem, one of the things I realized and I was advised quite early is that you must be open, right? So I had told um, a guy called Spencer King about this uh, issue of mine of paying for these school fees. Um, <clears throat> and then Spencer called me on the one day and said, listen, come, let's do some work for uh, one of the guys here. His name is John LaRue. And literally that's how I got introduced to personal trust. I did a bit of work and then I left. Um, and I was obviously focused on my honors. Um, I got a call two years later to say, listen, just, uh, are you still interested? I said, no, not really quite. And I'm now things are heating up. Um, I did a bit of work as well again. Um, <clears throat> but there I really was now leaving varsity. I'd done my finance honors. Mm -hmm. I'd already ended up with, uh, with Sunlam. Um, in fact, they'd given me an, uh, an analyst position. I was an Andre Thomas's team. Um, and I got in there and the first meeting is in Africa. Now, from a portfolio, can you Africans pride me? But the other thing you realize growing up um, and when you're old is that you must be able to, um, uh, um, um, you know, engage people. Um, and of course, uh, being part of Ubumbo, that's actually what we were. So, um, backtrack to say, listen, guys, uh, I think second time in my life, I think we made a mistake, another U turn. Um, but, but, but I think they were also quite, quite open understanding. And so I didn't have a job. Um, they offer, they offer still on the table. Uh, I went back to, um, uh, I think the lady was, um, she's, I can't remember the HR lady, but the HR lady at the personal trust. And I said, listen, is there anything that's happening? Um, <clears throat> and then they said, no, listen, there's a, there's an administ uh, trust office assistant position that's opened up. Um, I think it was in Graham Vepinar's team. Um, so snatched it up. Um, I think it was less than a third of, of what Sanlam was offering. But mm. for me, it was just a segue and I'd spent some time in personal trust. And for me, it was an entrepreneurial business. I mean, the guys were, um, had started it literally in the boardroom and the stories the guys were telling was captivating, right? So you're like, geez, this is what I want a part of because if your thing is about skill, um, you must also understand that, that there is, uh, the you know, there's, 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 there's a language that you must learn about business. And so, uh, literally, that's how I got into personal trust. Um, so, you... Tando, maybe, maybe let me let me stop you there. So, so, so you leave a job at a big firm, right? And because of a language uh, barrier. Uh, well, we had, a, we had a conversation about the language, but at the end yeah. of the conversation, I could see that uh, they were not interested in my problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but then you then go and have to take a job which is a third of what you were previously earning maybe a, a few a few months ago and then there's this pressure as well your you know your dad has passed you you probably are also taking some responsibility at home yeah let's, just let's, unpack that that for us can we add the context where you say the position was not even something which you had actually studied for it was some form of administrative yes. job There's no it was it was definitely and emotions there you need to unpack <laughs> no no so so again i knew i knew the business um and so that made it very easy i, I wouldn't advise someone okay. to take on something they're not familiar with so my two stints and the second one was quite long you know um i, I had gotten to understand the business uh, and i knew the business was literally about relationships that's that's what the business was about and it's something that I've become very interested in. <clears throat> um, so for me, it was a learning curve. It, it, and, and for me at the time, and I still believe this, your first three or four years of working 
you're not going to walk in there and tell the guys how to make an extra million rand. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So for me, it was an extension of, it's like an apprenticeship. And mm -hmm. I gave a timeline. And, but, but, but I decided it's something that I want to do. The other thing that made it very easy for me, I was still out, out, out earning my, my, my clerk friends. Ungange was, was, was about to work for Deloitte. And I knew I was, I was out, out earning by 500 rand. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> So, we're in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, to answer, um, I think you're asking. No, I think I, I think look, you've 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 answered the question, and 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 it's very interesting. Now you then move into personal trust, right? And you are now the MD of personal trust. But I can't imagine that when you started, you know, it was like you know. I'm going to be MD of this company one day, but what was that journey to the place where you eventually got to, to being MD? Now, if, if, if you go and look at personal trust uh, uh, website, it's, 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 it's uh, in terms of the leadership side, the diversity is low. So it's, it's, it's almost like the, the difference in culture, in, in age, you know, you probably, you were probably the youngest as well. At, at that stage in terms of the directors that that are that were there when you became yeah. md yeah so and, and we're still on that journey right so 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 the reality is um the the business even today still um represents and services um majority white clients um and it's old money it's money that's come through trust and some of them have but it's but it's 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 that kind of so that segment of the population. Now you can look at it in two ways. You can say, ah, oh, I don't belong. Here. I want to look in. But the reality is that if you want to bring true transformation in any business, uh, in any segment in South Africa, given our historical context, um, we must bring the mandas into the room. Um, <clears throat> and so for me, it was always uh, uh, something that intrigued me. It was always something that that, that I said. And so. When I started, I mean, I remember I did an interview um, for UCT and, 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 and someone, it, someone in the office read it, I don't know why, because I thought I was just doing it for UCT because they're wondering, how's this guy finished in four years? So they get, asked me a few questions. And one of the things I said today is that, listen, I, I finally ended up at Personal Trust. I would like to be a director. And for me, <clears throat> it's, it was nowhere near thinking that I would run the business. Uh, but for me, I, I knew even back then that I could add a lot of value. Uh, at the time, I thought it was through fund management. Um, and I did end up in that part of the business because I've had four or five distinct roles within personal trust. But, um, and, and, but it, obviously it's evolved and things, but I knew from the beginning that part of my um, uh, job, if it's going to be successful, and, and, and I gave myself timelines, was that uh, I would make a difference. And for me, if, if, if you, whether you're, you're, you're joining a team of three people or a team of, of 10,000, for you to be able to be indispensable, which is what you must be really in any company, for you to be indispensable, you must understand what the heart of the business is about and you must add mm -hmm. value. And for me, knowing the guys, I believe truly that if I did half of that, you know, I, 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 would, I would at least um, change from being an administrator to being given some responsibilities. Uh, and that happened, that happened within a year, actually. Wow, wow. And 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 what would you say what would you say was the enabler for you to be exposed to these four or five different roles and 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 how did those contribute towards your journey in growing within personal trust? Yeah, so so there was this actually quite a lot. Um <clears throat> uh, firstly, I never limited my world to personal trust. Um and uh, and so part of the journey for me was about life and, and, and um, even in my interest in business. Uh, so whether it's the Budapest roles or whatever you talk about, I've always believed business must be localized and business must make a difference um, to who I am and where we are. If it doesn't do that, then I don't think it's really a relevant business or business I want a part of. So um, <clears throat> What that means in the personal trust context, I was continuously having conversations within to say, well, I mean, I'll give you one practical example, you know, to go to someone who is um, a part of marketing team and say to them, listen, I understand um, this is where we are, but what do, we, what do you think we need to do to get there? Uh, and I'm genuinely asking this because I want to understand where, you know, um, and we have an engagement 
chance, there's a, there's, a, there's a much greater chance that when there's some project coming up or something, they'll come to you and say, hang on, uh, we've got this thing, What's, what do you think? Um, and you start building up those relationships one by one. And as much as you might be in a team of 20 people, um, the reality is that you've got an individual relationship with each and every single one of those people. And so when all of those lights turn green, because those lights can be red, you can walk into um, like the, the, the Sun Lam example, walk into, walk into a room and you realize it's red. Uh, but but if, you can, if you believe you can turn them green and you have to find out and it's very different, Udan will never be different, never be the same as Umanda. But they probably will have a common thread if they're working for the same company or they're the same group of friends. But if you're talking about enablers, you must also be talking about things that might seem um, very petty or small. I think support system is very important. Um, <clears throat> again, having a wider group. So I would go and talk to Lonabo. Lonabo by then was working for Alan Gray. You know, I made it a point that I would talk to Lonabo every month when he was still in Cape Town until he left us. Um, I would talk to, there's a guy that did actual science, I forget his name, I think it's David. Um, he was also a different firm. But I would go and talk to people in the industry um, to see what they were doing and bring that back to my company. And again, it's not uh, every mm. time I'm not going to be learning a new product. I'm just going to be learning about new methods or new ways of thinking about the market. And some of these people are competitors, but you'd be surprised at how open they are um, to sharing. And the, But the real focus is on adding value. The real focus is even if it's a two-man team or 100, guy, 100 people in the team, how do you move that team forward? And if you're seen as that person, um, it, it, you know, it, it, the lights will turn green. Uh, of course, the other things to navigate, I'm simplifying it here, but literally it's just uh, taking it seriously and taking it that seriously. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, look, we've, we've been getting some questions in the, in the Q&A. <clears throat> Uh, so please, if you have more questions for Tando, please, please put them in there. Um, Mr. Mali, I, I see your question. Thank you a lot. Um, and, and maybe look, uh, you know, Dan, Dan, you can come in here, but, uh, you speak about the rugby angle, right? And, and, and I do remember from being at UCT, uh, when this, uh, you know, surprise of a rugby club made of all black, uh, players was competing in the UCT league um, and to being now, you know, something that expands, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, 18, 20 years later, can you just take us through that journey and what that has meant, right. Uh, for you now being, being the chairman of such a, uh, a wonderful establishment. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so just quickly, uh, the journey there is actually quite instructive. And that's why I'm saying life is, is broader than just personal trust. And even at personal trust, you know, the one thing that I enjoyed about the guys, it was very clear that they were interested in other things in life. So John Leroux, for example, uh, is the deputy president of, of UST Rugby. And it, while he's doing that, he went and started a rugby club called um, Masakane, which is in the township, a very new township that just sprung up where he's moved to uh, near Nuerto. Um, but Ubumbo, I, I didn't start Ubumbo. Ubumbo happened at the right time for me, I might say. Um, it, mm. was a, uh, it, it was a group, group of black guys at UCT and understand UCT, um, St. Andrews, all of these um, progressive uh, institutions in South Africa had allowed uh, black people way before. And the problem is that they were hung up about how to integrate. So you found that uh, institutions, this is, this is my theory, that um, didn't have that history, got on with the business of integrating. But because UCT had a legacy of, for example, all the black students that either stay in Langa or Liam, Lisbeck Hall, even when we arrived at UCT, we were the, one of the few people at Copano and you had one of Springlings at Smarts or, or, the, or they were at, at a sort of university house. And so that is really the background. Ubumbo then it was a group of guys, Okama and um, Mazlandun and the guys, uh, they were about to leave varsity. So Klam, I think, was almost in his final year, Klam Akosi. And they said, listen, I don't know if it was an act of defiance, but they started their own team because they wanted to, to be able to choose each other, off, which didn't happen at UCT. Uh, for me, coming from a, a Dell college where we had majority Black people in matric, in our first team, it was, it was a very foreign concept to be told that UCT must go play wing. I was like, guys, what's going on now? I want to play center. Um, so got to Bumbo, it, it really was something that resonated. 
Um, it didn't play, it didn't it wasn't there in our, in our third year. Um, and so when we when we resurrected it, um, uh, it wasn't me by the way. There's a guy called this Pelele together with Zandi. There the guys brought me in. Um, <clears throat> it was for me then my vision because I then took over took over and I said, listen, you guys, this is how we're gonna do it. And my vision really and it still is the same thing today that. It, it, it really is a home for people to be themselves and to create their own future. And um, what then happens is that when you move to corporate, a lot of the guys realize that, hang on, the same values or same battles and same issues we're talking about there at Varsity, actually, not only do they exist in corporate, but they're much bigger. So you're walking into an investec and uh, you get the CEO to say, listen, uh, this is what it's about. You either fit in or you're out. And that's the language that they use, right? So it's not as kosher as, 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 as UCT and you learn very quickly. So even after Varsity, we found with the guys that we actually became much closer. We were able to, sh to share stories. Um, and of course, now 18 years on, you've got a lot of people who are successful, not I mentioned names. Um, and now they're able to, um, I mean, for example, I'll, I'll give you a specific example. Tembelani Mayosi played prop with us. He's now an advocate. Um, you know, he's mentored uh, Ukamba, who's, who's my cousin, and through uh, articles, and he's now also an admitted attorney. Now, those things didn't exist for us. Um, and, and for me, uh, there are other business leaders, and I won't mention names, um, who are out there and all they're interested in is BE deals. Uh, I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done uh, to make sure South Africa is the South Africa that we need it to be. Okay. So, Malak, can I suggest we go into the Q&A? Let's let's do it, and and I want and 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 I want us to start with the with the mapping Kimuhodi here as question because okay. she's a, she's a, she's a senior. By the way, by the way, uh, Mapinki, um, uh, thank you for 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 those Joy of Jazz uh, tickets. Uh, I I I was leeching onto onto Zandile and enjoyed some good music. Um, and thank you for your questions. Oh, the reason uh, why the first question is because she, she gave you the hookup. Yeah, you know, this is... This is... <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to stage after you. Yeah, well, nep uh, nep nepotism. Dan nep was just talking the, about a couple of minutes ago. Nepotism of the highest order. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the question says, what would you say to a young ambitious employee is the best option? Start as a generalist and rise through the ranks or be a skilled specialist in a particular field as a stepping stone to be at your level? I think, I think, it, differs. I think it differs where you end up. Um, there are people whose personalities, um, you know, mean that they need to specialize and, 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 um, also there are jobs that are, that are, that are, that are very, very specialized, um, and I mean, Manda, we have friends who uh, 10 years after we all graduated, we're still driving city golfs. Uh, and now they can buy a new car every month because they, they became specialists. But um, generally, I would say my answer and my preference is to learn as much as you can. Um, and I think the biggest challenge we, we, we face is pressure that we put on ourselves firstly, or pressure that we face as family. Um, and the reality, and that's why I try to start with the context because everyone's context is different. But, mm -hmm. you know, we still have, if you look at how many people go to school, end up, at, end up at, in matric, go to varsity, it's still a very, very, very small portion. And so um, for those people who do end up in a corporate and starting up, um, firstly, be grateful and I understand. But the reality is that your job is much bigger than just yourself. <clears throat> and so for me, if you're Black, understand the industry you're in, understand what's going on. Don't just go there for the paycheck. But that's, that's, that's my view. Fantastic. Oh, sorry, the other thing is um, continue, continue to, to, to be in study mode. So for the first three years, please, if you've got eight hours of the day, work 10 hours, um, work 13 hours if you can. Those extra hours, they, they compound because that's how you get ahead because you, you, you understand your job so well after six months, you, you comfortably can move on to another one. Uh, in fact, you, a lot of the times you can even tell your manager kindly, um, you know, how to improve on your own job description. But you don't get that if you are always um, practicing this thing called presentism, which is you're just there and you're sitting and five o'clock you leave. Mm. Uh, be present and... and and, and that's for me the biggest uh, the biggest thing I could say. And I would even say to myself, right, because 
I find that a lot of the times I stretch myself thin. Um, and it's not about doing too many things. I mean, I, I, I literally, in my first five years of personal trust, got to, you know, touch many areas. But it's, it's about focus and, and, you know, Saturday mornings aren't that important. You, you can go back and just make sure that you've, you've done two or three hours. Um, I promise you after two or three years, that, that all adds up. Cool. Um, the next one I want to do is the one from Happy. Uh, it says, please share your ethic challenges and difference at work. And how do you deal with those? <clears throat> yeah, so personally, um, I haven't had many ethnic challenges really, um, to be honest with you. Um, and I think it is very unique. So I think most people in Cape, in, in Cape Town, uh, whether you're at work or, or not, um, you feel that you're black and you feel that you are uh, of a different makeup to other people. Um, and so, if I'm understanding the question properly, it's ethnic, right? Not not ethic. Ethic, ethic. It's an oh, no, ethnic, ethnic, oh. ethnic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that sorry, the fact that when yeah. you look at your website, you're the only black person on that website. Yeah. No. No. So 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 that's 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 quite important. Um, and and I I, I guess the the important thing is um, be open about it. Um, with your style, firstly, uh, and secondly, um, with with the people around you. And so I have open conversations with my partners about being the only black person on the board. Um, <clears throat> I'm also on a few other boards. Um, there are other different types of challenges. And one of the challenges I've come across there is you're all board members, but you know we, we now have to weigh up whether or not to use um, the white or the Western, probably a better way to put it, uh, the Western way of um, socializing with people or the African way. So quite, give, bring you a very clear example. Do you go and say, and I did done, or do I go call you done? Or do I say, and, 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 and for me, if we're going to get South Africa right, we must embrace who we are. We must embrace our ethnicity. We must embrace our culture. And so... Uh, we have quite open conversation and I would even go so far. I mean, there's one guy in, in, in who was going to a, one of my partners was going to a traditional wedding uh, last year because we have these conversations and I'm openly, you know, he was able to come to me and say, okay, fine. So what happens, you know, what happens at a, at a, at a Tosa wedding? What should I wear? I went out and got him something to wear, but it's not surface thing. It actually then boils down to what kind of initiatives we, we, we we're planning. Uh, but for me, it, the, the biggest tool you can give yourself is to be open about it. The minute you 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 are uncomfortable, you block it up. Um, I did have one interesting story. Um, uh, the lady is no longer with us, um, but she was a lady who used to be a clerk and an assistant. I, I walk into third year working working at Personal Trust. I walk into um, the kitchen. I greet a lady by Sis Mandy, and I was speaking closer, and she turns around. She's colored. She says, "Hey, don't come and pray that language here." <laughs> 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 and I could tell it's not the first time she said this to a closet speaking person, right? Um, anyway, I, I left it on that day. I just went out. And then two days later, I went back to her and I said to her, listen, um, you know what you said the other day? I, I really don't think it's right that you, as, as, as a closet person, you talk to me, you're shocked. You know? And I didn't just say, I don't think it was right. I, I'd, like, let's, I'd like us to chat about this thing. And then within a week, you know, she was not only apologetic, but she got to you know, say, okay, so how do you pronounce that and whatever. But the wow. point is my, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that it's right for everyone, but the point is often we get uptight and anxious, but a lot of people are responding on saying things because of their own insecurities or how, however they're feeling. Um, mm. and, and for me, I just leave it at the time and, and try to engage later. But the worst thing you can do is pretend it's not there. Be honest with it. Don't engage it immediately, but sometimes I think it's it's important to engage it, depending on the. I'm not sure if I'm answering the question because I'm not sure the question is clear. Happy, I'm yeah, no. happy. Look, it sounds good. So, so the next question comes from Mawa Tumuhati. She says, "Tando, what was the biggest lesson you learned in business, and what would you do differently, knowing what you know now?" The biggest lesson I learned was um, <clears throat> managing a portfolio. Um, uh, it was 2008, um, financial crisis. I think I had just gotten married. I was about to get married. 
um, first crisis I've ever lived through. I was managing uh, a unit trust portfolio, but also I, I was looking after private portfolios. Um, my partner at the time was out um, and there was a trade on his, um, on his uh, portfolio that, in fact, it wasn't even a trade. There was something that needed to happen in his portfolio and the call came to me. And the way I responded to it is, 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 is no, I should have never responded in that way. So what I did is I took the easy way out. I, I, I picked up the portfolio. I saw what the call was. I asked what happened last time and his decision last time was to leave it as is. Um, I asked for the prospectus because it was a rights issue. Um, it was a 60 page document. I briefly read it, probably took me about an hour. I did not understand it properly. Um, and I made the easy decision to take whatever decision he took the previous time. I could have done a number of things. I could have called him. I could have told him, listen, don't trade. I, I could have read the prospectus properly. Uh, it wasn't a prospectus, the prospectus is new, but there was something that was, was a corporate action that was happening. Um, so, <clears throat> so, so that was the biggest mistake. Um, it, 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 uh, in the end, didn't cost us money, but it could have cost us um, tens of thousands of rand. Um, big for me because I was quite new. So I was new in the team. I'd been in the portfolio management team, I think for about two years before then. And I'd just been entrusted with the responsibility of managing a unit trust, which none of my peers were doing um, four years out of varsity. Uh, so that was a big decision for me, but the lesson actually is what's more important. Um, uh, you know, uh, one of the senior guys at the time um, came to me and said, listen, this is what happened. Okay, so of course I said, no, yeah, I own that. Um, <clears throat> and, not, not, I mean, I didn't know at the time, but all calls were recorded, right? <laughs> so I went and told exactly what happened, and this is what I said, you know, and of course it, it was the truth. But the point is, what saved the day and the lesson that, I'm, that I learned is, one, be, uh, be very diligent uh, about something, even if it's not your own responsibility. So at the time, I think, and I'm not sure I reasoned it this way, but I thought because it wasn't my portfolio, I, 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 if it was mine, I might have taken more care, put it that way. Um, so whatever decision it is, whether it's in your portfolio or not, especially if someone's not there to help someone else's portfolio out, you must take care. Um, but also what saved my skin is that I was blatantly honest about it. So when the senior person came to me, I didn't know there was a, there was a recording. I told them exactly what happened. And I told them, listen, mm -hmm. I actually this easy decision. Um, fortunately, we were able to, to reverse because they had done some, made an error on their side. But um, that was, for me, the biggest lesson. It still sticks to my mind um, to this day. Okay. We have a question uh, from, um, uh, from Zandi. So hopefully you're getting excited and you're getting more anxious because she wants to see you blast. And the question is simple. Would you say you're successful now? Or are you ready to retire? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't uh, think I'll ever retire. <laughs> okay. And the first part of it. <laughs> what did I say? He says, do would you say you are successful now? And then are you ready to retire? Yeah, so <laughs> we have these conversations. I think that's how Zang is asking me this. Um so, so I mean, I, I would say there are things that I wanted, I've, I've felt were important to achieve um, in life, and I've been fortunate enough to um, be able to achieve them, um, some of them. There are other things that I would like to achieve, as I've said, I'd like to put together an album. I'm working together with a guy called Tools Morgan, might come out in 10 years' time. Um, <laughs> but there are things I still want to achieve, still things that I, that I think are wrong in the country. And I think we all have a greater calling than just being in corporate. I think corporate is but one part of our lives. Um, but I do think that, you know, just like leaders before us have, have really been taken upon themselves to create a South Africa for the, that's right for the next generation, I think we all need to do the same. So that work will never be done. Um, but in corporate, um, and I don't think personal trusts are corporate, by the way, or at least I don't see it as a corporate. I've never approached it as such. Uh, but in business, definitely not done. I think there will definitely be other chapters. Um, and as Manda, I think, as I told Manda earlier, I don't really, really like talking about myself. I think this is um, something I've probably never done. Very uncomfortable. Um, so the reason I haven't blushed is because I've told myself not to blush. But, but I think I think I think everyone's story is unique. Um, and and um, what Manda said to me is that if someone can learn anything from this, uh, then then it's great. So 
I hope I've said something that's that's positive. If not, I'm sorry to anyone I've offended. All right. So um, last two questions that we would like to to squeeze in uh, is looking back to the decisions. Uh, this is from Sakekile, Mali. Looking back to the decisions that you took to go with personal trust, um, are you still happy with your choice and the alignment of the business and your beliefs? Uh, is it still there? Yes, no, no, definitely. So again, for me, personal trust was about the people. Um, and <clears throat> for me, it, okay, firstly, it was about learning. Let me not um, uh, jump, jump ahead of myself. Initially, it was about learning, and I knew that um, I could get an opportunity to learn. And that's literally all I went there for. And um, the reason I've stayed and the reason I've, I've stayed this short, because believe it or not, uh, our founding director has been there for 40 years, two of the, two of the four. Um, so when I say 16 years, people think it's a long, but they, they've been there since day one. The reason I've stayed, I mean, my partners um, really, really are people who, um, you know, allow the space for you to, to, to create your own. So one could have this grand, you know, vision grand year to, um, go and start your own firm and pursue what I'm passionate about, which is bringing financial services to 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 the to, to the people. And for me, we're still only scratching the surface. We've only covered literally maybe 10 percent or 12 percent, even with the new financial services companies and post bank, uh, in terms of banking uh, the, the people that, that 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 need to be banked um, and making sure people understand what they're doing. I mean, they're still thousands and thousands of people who have money in the mines who don't even understand how to you know, claim that money. And, and so there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But, um, I can't ever say, coming back to the question, I can't ever say, Saiki, that um, me being at personal trust is a hindrance um, to, to, to achieving all of that. In fact, I think I'm at the right place to, to um, start anything that I think um, is, is worth. But in terms of staying, I think it's the people. And if that were to ever change, um, then, then, Probably at that point, I would think about doing something else. But uh, I think I work with a great bunch of people. And um, coming back to your question, Manda, uh, about you know looking at the board and being Lily White, uh, we have open conversations about that. So we have open conversations. And if you look at the people who are coming through now, um, I'm, I'm hopeful. In fact, not hopeful. I'm, I'm pretty confident in the next five years, if not shorter, um, that that will that will that will start to change. So. Uh, but again, it's not about um, the skin color. It's not about, um, it, it's really about making sure that, you know, the opportunities and, and, and the solutions are there. And, and I think the rest will follow. Uh, of course, it's important to, to support uh, black people, especially in Cape Town, because that doesn't happen. Uh, let's, let's, let's not mince the words. A lot of corporates here are struggling to even attract because we, everyone knows it's, 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 it's not a place um, where people come and feel nurtured. Uh, I've been lucky that my experience has been, has been, has been slightly different. Cool. I think we have time for one last question, but I have to give you credit. I think, um, I think I also alluded to it when we talked on waves around the diversity that is a challenge. Me and Manda work in an organization where it is run by black people, but then you had clicks of white people and if you tried in any way, to participate, even if your objective they made it very difficult. So I give kudos to you for getting to a stage where you could actually get to some MD position uh, and be a leader in that organization. I'm gonna combine the last two questions from Pinky and Siva. Um, this is really talking to business and family life balance. Although now the time, the term we are using is um, uh, work-life integration. So people they are asking to say, how do you strike or how do you integrate the work life um, uh, in your context? In, in my context, there's three. So there's work, there's family, and the life is probably too big um, uh, because it involves Wumbo, it involves a whole lot of things. Um, and I think, firstly, um, I, to, to even be able to manage that, you need a partner that's understanding. Um, not understanding in the sense that um, they know what's going on, but also actively supporting, uh, supportive. So I've really been lucky to have to have Uzandi in that regard. Um, but what I've also realized, because she's also um, a career person, and and um, you know she has it a lot. So we've got three children, and the impact on her career has been much, much more than the impact on mine. So. 
um, I think we still have a lot of work to do um, to make sure that people understand, not just for men, uh, but also for women, that um, the corporate and the job is important, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be, uh, it sh shouldn't overwhelm everything else, in particular family. Um, I also think that as men, we should, we should be looking, because we uh, don't, aren't really, and I guess it depends when you get married, but I think guys, when you get to 40, um, play more of a may play more, more of a larger role in the, in, in the house, um, and 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 I think that that is that is something perhaps you guys should talk about because we always talk about these dynamics as something that's external. Um, but you know, if 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 there's two of you, two of you need to tango and make sure that whatever's there needs to be taken care of. Um, but for me, uh, balancing it has been uh, reasonably easy because of my support structure. Uh, but I think also. Um, what I've tried to do is align all my projects into something that, I'm, that I believe in. So whether it's Reimagine or Boombo or at work, it's, it's not, I don't ever feel like I'm stepping out of one place to go into another. So uh, the people I usually have fun with, you know, uh, or show them and, them and I play rugby with them, you know, they also support my business and I'll support their business. And so it then becomes a, a community as opposed to something that is not aligned. Um, mm. But, but it's not easy it, and it's something that deserves a much um, bigger part in our agenda because we've inherited a system and that system, uh, forgive me for saying, is not aligned with Ubuntu. And so there's always this tension when it comes to playing whatever role you need to play culturally um, and cultural changes. Right? So I'm just saying in your own understanding versus what this corporate under, uh, expects. And mm. these corporates, I'm not talking about corporates that's in New York or in China. Um, in fact, the ones that are in New York and in China understand the Chinese culture, they understand the Japanese way of doing things. Um, and even the leadership courses that they would teach, Dan, you would know this in, China, in, in Japan, um, are actually centered around the brain, how the brain functions, which means that the people at the bottom of the food chain actually in, uh, you know, inform uh, the leadership. So the leadership style even takes culture into account. Here, mm. I think we are very much um, Dutch Western dominated on the one hand, and the other one is very much, um, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't want to use that word, I might, I might go into trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, indeed, and in, indeed, we don't want to get into trouble. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for staying. We've we have gone quite over time. So, if you still have questions, please put them in the QA. What we'll do with the questions that have not been answered, we'll just get time in, in Tando's busy schedule and we'll get them answered. But on my, on my side, Tando, it's been a pleasure um, not knowing you for the past 20 years, but also having parts of your story uh, that, that you've shared with us uh, that, that really will help myself and the audience uh, learn as well. Uh, thank you for that. Dan? Thank you, Tando. Um, I think it's always inspiring. I think you took a route which is not, not standard. And also your role is also not standard in what you're doing in the organization, like I said. It's a fascinating. Somebody write, you need to write a memoir. I think you should write a book. People need to figure out how <laughs> you can actually do, forget about work-life integration, uh, racial integration or diversity integration in organization. There's a lot of talks. Uh, I do, I, I, I participate in a lot of webinars around um, people and, uh, um, and change management. Uh, there's a lot of talks around cultivating diversity. And I think you've done a pretty good job. And there's something there to really have a conversation with. But thank you very much. Thank you. Good. So the last speaker, do we have the last speaker, Poster? The speaker for next week. Uh, I'll introduce. So the last speaker, uh, the next speaker, sorry, is going to be Alec Matambo. Um, this is a person who's worked and been an executive on three continents in Europe for like, I think about, about five, six years, uh, in Africa for about five, six years. He's now in America, he's, um, he's uh, VP Global Change Strategy for Dell. Somebody me and Manda knew since 20, 2010. Yeah, 2010, um, 2011. We've been looking forward to coming on the, on, the, on the webinar. So please come and join us next week as we hear his story. He's always gonna talk about pivoting in the different culture and the different environment because he's found a way of working it and being successful at it. So till next week. Thank you very much and have a good weekend. Um, Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, to tell Alec that I, I got number 23. Yeah?
He's number 24. Oh, <laughs> and by the way, he's, he's, he's more of a, I think he's a heat fan. So, <laughs> I'll tell him. Yeah. All right, thank you, guys. Th- thank you, everyone, and enjoy your weekend. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.